Welcome to the Concept 101 podcast. My name is Daniel. Jules. Stefan. We are three concept artists currently working in the film and games industry, as well as the organizers of the Concept 101 event in London. Now, if you haven't listened to us before, what we do is we all bring in a different subject to talk about, which is all going to be vaguely either art or concept art related. And then we argue about it for an hour. And um, precisely argue. You lose an hour of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And today is a special day because it should have been, if we calculated correctly, yeah. a year we've been doing this nonsense. Wow. Yeah. So, so we hope you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, we're not doing anything special for the one year anniversary. <laughs> yeah. If we, so now if we had like 10,000 subscribers. Yes. Yes. Guys, if you all send us money, maybe we'll do something. No, that's not what I was thinking. If you send, every, if everyone, if you send me money. That's not what I know. Then I'll do See, something. See, I was special. thinking if they just um, get married and have kids and then Wait, force, force their kids to listen to our podcast. What the fuck? <laughs> not only contributing to, to more people. It's been one year and it's the last one we'll ever do because we've been cancelled. <laughs> that was not a cancelled type of joke. I mean, definitely get you reported at HR. I'm reporting you to HR. Oh, yeah. Concept who's, 101. Who's, who's HR, concept HR? 101. Uh, Jules, probably. Stefan, you were here by our being. Oh, <laughs> no. Fuck me. Well, this has been a terrible start, I yes. feel. Um, let me just take my goddamn subject, man. <laughs> Please, before anybody else says anything else. So, I am in keeping with uh, most of my topics going for something intensely clickbaity, but I think it is useful to have a conversation about, and that is how to never have art block again. So, art block is something that is super commonly discussed in the industry, but I feel like it's very, very misunderstood. And just to begin with, I think the reason it's misunderstood is because professionally, it's pretty uncommon. When you're working in-house, when you're working for a client, freelance, whatever it may be, you're not going to have a day where you don't produce a piece of art because you are being paid to produce art. Mm. doesn't mean that there aren't disparities in the quality that you produce, but you're never going to have the classic student art block where you just stare at a piece of paper every day. So what I want to talk about is number one, if you ever experienced art block in any capacity, uh, whether that's when you before you're a professional or when you are a professional, and if you have any solutions to get around these things or ways that you essentially don't have to deal with this problem anymore as a adult who works in the industry. Yeah. First of all, one is what do you guys define as an art block? Does that mean you don't feel like you have any good ideas? Does that I mean think, you're blocked on well, a painting? What I, think is not the, I think the stereotypical understanding of it, if you go on to like student forums and stuff, mm. is I can't draw. That When I was a student yeah. and I was younger, I remember that's what people would say. Oh, I just, I had art block yesterday. I just couldn't draw. Really Which to me is not the art block. For me, an art block would be, I'm not finding anything exciting enough or I don't feel like anything I'm doing is good enough, therefore I'm having an art block. It's almost like the white page for a writer, which right. is, I feel like nothing original is coming to my mind, therefore I cannot write any good stories. Yeah. So, I also there might think... be a difference to be made by someone who can't draw because they don't have the skills to feel like they can draw good enough to translate their ideas, mm-hmm. and someone who's like, I don't know what to draw. To me, a real art block is... I don't know what to draw. <laughs> or like anything I'm drawing is a bad idea. Yeah. I would also add that art blog to me is longer than a day. I think to have to say like you have an art blog, it has to be something that's at least probably more than a week or maybe even two weeks mm. for you to be able to say like, oh, I have an art blog. Um, yeah, when you like really cannot produce art uh for at least that much time i mean i would say mostly it's defined by like really having no inspiration or like no no wanting to do art okay. like you just whenever you get to it you're like i don't want to do it at all or you even feel disgust yeah like you're dis- d- disgust like disgust you, yeah disgust as like, in like Ugh, disgusting yeah be like feeling uncomfortable in, in yeah. the sense that like, Un- it, like almost uneasy about, exactly yeah. be like oh this is like feels like some sort of a chore that i don't want to do and like it really and the more you think about it the harder it makes you wanting like the less you want to do it essentially so do you guys think at least in your again like in your experiences have there ever have there been things that often lead up to art block for you like i think for me one of the things that i mean again I don't really feel like I have experienced art block in any like real material sense. I've experienced days where I'm less motivated, Mm -hmm. but those days where I've had that feeling have often been kind of like uh, preluded by 
Is that the right word? I don't know. Anyway, before that, I've just completed a big project. I usually have my worst yeah. art block after finishing a large project, which I put a lot of effort into. Maybe that's something that took me like over a month, maybe two months, maybe three months, even if it's a really big project. And that is the time where I find myself the most unmotivated because I literally will sit down and be like, well, done with that. And then you just, you're just like back to zero. It's like you, you've just been like culminating all of your time, all of your experience. It's crescendoing, the music's building up. It ends and then you're just like left in a silent room the silent room being your your own head, I suppose. And mm-hmm. you're just like, well, fuck, what do I do now? Well, or, or like, you know, also you probably just published it on Instagram. So you're getting all the, I guess, rewards for it. So you you get this almost like adrenaline high of, oh shit, I'm sharing stuff. Oh, people are liking it, hopefully. Or maybe they, <laughs> oh, and nobody or, likes yeah. it. <laughs> nobody, you're, like, you're like, oh, wow, cool. Wow, it's amazing. And then you're like, oh, I, I want more of it. How do, okay, I'll start from again from scratch. And uh, yeah. I, I have had similar stuff where I publish something or I, I, I finally get something out of the way let's say and then i'm like oh okay well what do i do now and usually in the past i would just don't do anything for a while because i didn't mm. feel like it uh, which probably wasn't our block but i wasn't forcing myself and lately i've been trying to be mo- more uh, i talked about this in the previous podcast i was i was trying a bit i was trying to be more productive but mm-hmm. then i would feel i don't know if it's our blocks but i would feel much less creative or like i wouldn't have any amazing ideas or anything that would truly drive me coming straight away and that would take me some time what, what did i say <laughs> oh, <no>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. sound uh, flip it oh well um, <laughs> and 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 that would take time then which i guess is not luck to just uh to get a happy about the project <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, last year, I actually had a lot of quote-unquote art block. Um, I was making a lot of very small projects. So last year, I did a lot of little paintings. Um, I was experimenting with a lot of different processes. And I think the thing that made me feel like I had art block was not that I wasn't painting a lot, because I was, but because I wasn't sure why I was painting stuff or what I was painting. Like, I would find, like, another artist's work that I liked, and I'd be like, okay, well, they did something like that, so I'm going to try doing something like that, and I'd use a similar subject matter or whatever and try to be inspired by it. And honestly, it was very rare that it worked for me. I just found myself spinning my wheels. I would start a project and then change it and change it and change it and change it until I found something that I liked, and it wasn't a very linear process for me. I think the thing that has changed a little bit for me this year so far and i mean we're very very early into this year but i kind of mean like the last few months is i've been trying to focus on projects um that rather than i guess like putting myself in the pressure of like i'm going to paint this as good as matthew Walsall paints this or something right or i'm going to paint this as good as jamie jones paints it i'm just putting myself in the mindset of being like what do i like i really like world building Mm. let's focus on that and the visual outcome of the project whether i sketch it or draw it or paint it or it's loose or very tight just is what it is and it is what i'm feeling it's going to be more than anything else i think that's really helped me because it helped me realize that the thing that i really enjoy about the process is yeah that world building aspect and um all that other stuff not to say i don't like doing individual paintings from time to time but i think it's helped me stay a bit more motivated uh to some extent you think that's the way to not have art block no, I think it just depends on the person, mm, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think as well, like... When, yeah, but you said, like, how to never have art block, so... Well, yeah, but that's, that's my well, clickbait may, maybe, title. Maybe, <laughs> as, maybe as we speak There's about no it, we'll, we'll find some answer. What, yeah. what, 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 you want me to, like, you what's want me your to tri- give an objective answer that will cover everybody? At the end, Stefan, what's your, <laughs> what's your uh, trick? Like, what do you do? Do you have art blocks? I, I don't do enough personal work, probably, to, like, get uh, art block from that at work i i have an amazing project i'm always excited for Mm -hmm. it i definitely feel sometimes like a lot of times at my work i feel like i could be doing better like it's i feel like i'm underperforming almost um i think having a lot of like negative thoughts definitely contributes to feeling like i don't have art block but i certainly have periods of time when i feel very negatively about my art and that contributes to me having like a very shitty day so i try to like stay away from these negative thoughts and i try to be more positive about it and just like daniel was saying just focusing on the things that i enjoy so like even if i might not enjoy the final outcome like i enjoyed the idea that i came up with you know i enjoy I enjoy the collaboration in the team, you know. 
and maybe I'm still doing great work, but like it doesn't change how I feel about it. So I, yeah, I would say if I, if you can try to find a way how to separate yourself from those feelings, um, definitely helps. Uh, just like your art, and also like the quality of your art doesn't necessarily have to always determine whether you are whether you've had a good day or a bad day. Mm-hmm. For me, it certainly does. Um, <laughs> But I've been trying to kind of step away from it, and sometimes even like having a little hobby that you are excited about yeah. I think, I can help you. Like, yeah. I mean, for me, having a chat with with Daniel could put me in a better mood than I was before I had this like did this shitty artwork or something. That's impossible, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, yeah, the two sides of the room of enjoying or not enjoying conversations with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you touched on something interesting there, which is you were talking about the professional capacity of this. Yeah. And like I said, like when you're talking, sometimes when you talk with students, their idea of art block is very extreme. It's mm. like, I can't put anything on the paper. And I was wondering, like, you must have days where creatively you struggle professionally. So do you guys have, again, just in the professional environment, ways of dealing with that, where even when you're just like, fuck, okay, I don't want to do this. You can still get it done because it's your job. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you just do you just do the work um, however you're asked for it. Uh, but Yeah, the, it's, it's quite... I have, I would say I have had, for example, for the past two, two, maybe less than two months, I felt like I had a very, like, I don't feel like I produced as good of a work as I wanted at work, personally. Uh, and that... That's sometimes how it goes, you know, like, I just have to remind myself that it's okay. Um, and then sometimes you have periods at work, like, when I'm producing and it's just good shit all the time. It's just like, yeah. cool, 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 cool project. And you really feel like you're on top of the world and, like, you know, all the everything is, like, in this one perfect pot. Uh, and you're mixing the ingredients correctly and producing the best meals all the time. But um, that's also a good time. But uh, at the end of the day... You know, as long as you can get the projects out and if you can find a way how you can contribute to the team, uh, then that's all that matters. Yeah. And, and you know, I think you will just do the work because you get paid for it. Yeah. Otherwise, you just get fired. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a good motivator, not <laughs> getting fired. That's the tricky thing is that the, the easy answer is, well, I just do it because I have to. But then there's a way of doing it which are a bit nicer than others, right? You can, you can be grumpy all day and be demotivated, yeah. but doing it because you have to make a living. Or you can try and find ways for you to feel better and maybe um, enjoy more the process and therefore probably making better art. Uh, I personally try to find some sort of, you know, if, if I have, usually if I have art block, I know it's because maybe a project is not as interesting as I had wished for, for example. Yeah. Uh, because if I like a project, I'm never going to be an art block by experience, or I haven't had yet. Um, so let's say a project is not as interesting as I like to, therefore I don't, I don't feel very motivated, so I have an art block. Then I would try and almost challenge myself on sp- some specific areas yeah, of the project. Yeah. Like, okay, so what's, like, I don't really like this project, but maybe it's very painterly. Well, that's a good opportunity for me to learn more about painting, you know? Yeah, or like, just find or like, that one little yeah. thing that you can enjoy, like, even if it's, yeah, like the yeah. painterly thing, just something you can focus on that you are going to be It's like a, a personal challenge or finding the bright side of it where it's like, as an artist, like, if I was studying this or um, if, I were, if I were to learn how to paint better, what can I tackle this project for it to benefit me uh, in the, the long run? That, that's honestly such an excellent suggestion, honestly, because... I worked actually with an art director in the past who really took that mindset and mm-hmm. I would consider him like one of the best artists I've ever worked with by, I mean, he's fucking amazing, like really, really good, like next level shit. And I think part of the reason that he got so good and so successful was because he always kept that attitude. When he was doing like boring VFX frames that I was just like throwing them out and just being like, okay, man, do whatever, you know, I would just do like bare minimum, it would get approved mm-hmm. by a VFX supervisor. He was sitting there and he was like really like, I'm just trying to think about how I can make these clouds better. You know, mm. like he was really pushing like every single image. Um, now, personally speaking, for VFX work, I cannot do that. But I found it very inspirational and I tried to implement it in some work that I was doing, obviously depending on the turnarounds and stuff, right? Yeah. But I do try to keep that in mind because I, I always try to remember like, okay, well, that guy's one of the best artists I ever worked with. And the reason he was so good is because he was always making sure he could find something to push and something to learn on every single image he did, no matter how bland or boring it was. Uh, another 
way to find a bright side that I found works with me is that, you know, sometimes we're not allowed to post everything we do for work. But sometime when the project is released, uh, yeah, breaking NDA can really cheer you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like sometime really, when, a, when a project really is released, mess up your career. <laughs> they they choose surprisingly weird image that you're allowed to post. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so what if they choose that image? Like this thing, not not very fun. I'm doing now. If it's for a project, I still like to share one day. Mm -hmm. What if they allow me to post it? And I'm going to post it. What would make me feel good about posting it? Like, right, right. And so how can I make this image the next level for me to feel happy in like three, three years, two years down the line where the project is out and I can post about it. And then it's like, so it's pretty much pushing myself to be as good as I can yeah. in, a whole, in, in hoping for fame later, I guess, or okay, for okay. likes later, Here's which is stupid, but it motivates me. How many rounds of iterations does that motivation stay for <laughs> <laughs> when you're on, like, uh, version 200 yeah. of a VFX frame? Yeah. And you're still like, I'm going to push this. <laughs> they, they might see it. They're never going to see They're it. They're never going to see it. Any day, yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, so luckily this almost never happened to me to have that many iterations happen to me yeah um <laughs> i find it quite um difficult like not difficult but i do think that sometimes there are days when you really don't want to do absolutely anything mm -hmm. uh yeah. and and that point um just saying to yourself okay like i'm gonna take this day chill and i'll just sit down and i'll just start drawing something and I'm not going to be very like harsh on myself. And if it goes well, it goes well. And it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. Uh, and then also, um, you know, I, I I personally feel like it depends on how much deadlines you have and like how much stuff you can do. I, I think if you do have like one week where it's not that bad, I don't think anyone's going to like fire you over it mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. As long as you like let your art director know. And also like if you let the art director know, they can try to help you out or try to be like, okay, like, can we switch it up? Or they, you know, they, like, you know, those people, they have way more experience than you. They've been working forever in the industry. They've probably experienced what you are experienced. And they might even have, like, answers to what you are experiencing that you did, never even knew about. Totally. So, yeah. like, sharing sharing how you're feeling, um, you know, it's it can still allow you to do it. I mean, also, sometimes shit just happens and you, you are really, like, not in the mood, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just need to tell people so so they are aware, so the production is aware. Yeah, um, yeah, because at least it will remove some of the um, of the professional stress out of your shoulder. Like yeah. I, I have been in the, in the few few years ago, I was on a project, and most of it was nice, but few tasks I struggled a lot with. And after stressing and almost getting angry by myself alone in my, in my place, I was just getting frustrated with it because I couldn't get it right. I just got a meeting with uh, with the the other actor at the time and I was like listen I, I'm struggling with this image I'm sorry it's not as high quality and, and they were like they did the right thing in my opinion which were like to be very understanding and be like don't worry this is already what we need we're gonna get in front of clients see what they say blah blah blah, blah. and this kind of almost you know like it's almost like removing the needle in the foot it's like oh okay I feel better now and it's mm. much less yeah. pressure and everything is like it's it's almost it unblurs everything uh, around you so, and you kind of understand a bit better or take a step back. I think if you can make the artist happy, like if you like if I was an art director and I had an artist that was like um, having some sort of an art block, it's like mm -hmm. finding a way, like really when you have an art block, you need to find like what is the problem? Like why is this artist maybe not producing? And like I know even like there's like these magic words that I heard a few times uh, that I know that I'm help. that, bro. No, it's, which is... You're fired if you don't work. <laughs> which are, really which, tends to motivate which are Which are like... Just focus on the quality. We don't care how much time it takes. As soon yeah. as someone says that to me, it takes away the time pressure. And I feel like, because that's the majority of the stuff when I feel pressure is when I have like very little time. And I go, okay, I can just focus on one thing, which is like quality. And I know how to do that. I just need to keep working on it. And yeah. One, one thing that I had, which is, uh, I, I'm going to be honest to say that this probably isn't the most helpful advice, but I do think it's real advice which is if you're being paid to do something, you just need to fucking get on with it. Um, if you are in your career, you know, like if you're doing, you know, you have a job in the industry or you're working freelance and you find that when you clock in for work, you got to do like two hours of painting studies or something to warm up, which is something I, you know, you see people online being like, my warm up paintings from this morning, that is insane to me, personally speaking. Like the idea that you have to warm up to do it, like you should kind of be in gear to an extent to start working as soon as you're on the clock to start working, right? 
because that well, is your that is your job. And if you can't do that, then you should practice doing that. I, I'm not doing any warm ups, but I wouldn't see any issue with someone doing warm ups before the working hours. I mean, sure, right? If it's before the working hours, fair enough. But I agree with you. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I it just, might be a habit for those people, I guess. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it would probably make you a better artist if you're doing stuff. Yeah, every sure. Day. Yeah, it's but, like it's like working out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Every but day. I think the point is like if you find yourself on a day where you're like, oh, I just can't do this, but you're being paid to do it, you need to change your mindset because ultimately that is part of the job. It's part of any job is being able to wake up and just get on with stuff. Mm. Um, if you're on a deadline, if there's a team of people relying on you, that is on you. And like Seven said, there is, or is it you? I can't remember, one of you two said something about, you know, like making production aware of things that might change. If you're having a really shit day, it does happen. But you still need to get the minimum outputs completed, regardless of what's happening, unless it's like a very severe thing that's happened, right? Like your house has collapsed on your head. I, I noticed that, especially uh, this year with, I mean, last year with everything that happened to the industry, I noticed we're very spoiled uh, oh, yeah. in, the, in this industry. Compared to everybody else in VFX? Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah. We're, uh, it's a very, um, I mean, yeah, of course. We work from our passion. That doesn't excuse anything bad happening to us. But it's it's a very, we work from our passions. It's a very, uh, we're not doing any other time. Uh, at least in, while I've been working, yeah. I haven't done it all the time. I've been very well respected. People have been listening to me. Um, and I feel like the least I can do is that when there's something, when they're waiting for me to do a small effort, then I should be doing it, you know? Yeah. And 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 also looking at other people that don't necessarily do what they want for a living, it's also very important to look at that because, again, we're very fortunate to be in this position. And I think yeah. it's important to remind yourself that, holy shit, that dream you had when you had a kid, that's not your job. Yeah. But I also think it's your professional uh, responsibility that you are having like days upon days where shit is not working out or you're not doing the best concepts or something. It's like you need to find why is that happening and like have conversations with people and stuff like that because there could be a small issue, like it could be a small change in your process or something. It could be literally the tiniest thing. That, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the way you hold your pen, but what if it is, right? Like, and you need to find that because that is that is also on you. It's like you need to well, find a way how to be productive. I think it's your shit. professional responsibility <clears throat> to... And again, I don't. I really don't believe that everybody needs to spend all their time doing personal work. I really don't believe everybody needs to strive to be the greatest concept artist of all time or some shit like that. It's just nonsense. But... I do think you need to meet the minimum requirements of your job. And one of the minimum requirements of any art job is just being able to get on with it. And I mean, so if any you, job, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. And it, But if you have to do practice in your own time, so if it's, for example, an issue of confidence where, like, you get a new task, for example, like a keyframe that maybe you haven't done before, then if that really fucks you up and you can't get on with it, you need to go and practice in your own time to get on with it. Yeah. By the way, I've I've heard a lot of students telling me I'm not sure if I'm ready for the industry. I <laughs> sometimes I get art block, so I'm not confident, or sometimes I noodle a bit too much before finding something. Yeah, I think that should not be a reason for you not to go for the job. Yeah, totally. I think uh, we're saying it's very important to be able to get on with this, but that's something that you also learn by fire, pretty much. Like it's almost like a trial by fire. Yeah, right. Like you kind of have to. It's hard to imagine how it is to have a client compared to doing your own projects, yeah. right? Because doing your own projects requires you to be creative. Sometimes you don't really need to create, be creative at work. Yeah. And uh, and also, yeah. if you're working from home, it's much more difficult to learn these things. If you get the opportunity to work in a studio, you're yeah. way more likely to get on with stuff because yeah. you're surrounded yeah. by other people doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be too worried. Uh, if you're a student, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I think focusing on your work should be important. But I'm just not, I'm just saying it because I've heard that in the past. Yeah. Um, sure thing. Nice. Awesome. Next subject? Next yeah. subject. Uh, I guess I'll go. I'll go. Woo. Unless you've got art blog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed online that many people, they say, oh, here's a little, you know, uh, going back to the warm-up we talked about. Here's yeah. a little warm-up sketch I did. And then you look at it and it's like a, a full-on 3D heavy image. Yeah. Right? And it's insane. And um, yeah, it's pretty impressive how in industry many people just keep lying about how fast <laughs> things take them. <laughs> Man, that, Do you think I'm, those people are lying? And I have been, awesome. I have been one of them as well. I'm, when I was, especially when I was a student, when, oh, I, really? when I was trying to, oh, I no, mean, Jules. Where I, the guy I, I, would be I like, don't think I, I lied took me two insanely. hours. No, I never said it took me two hours, but I was like, 
oh, here's today's sketch. And it, it probably took me like four hours, but I think a sketch should not take four hours. That's a lie. Right? I, got, I got called out on this last week. <laughs> <laughs> I put up um, my new project, Diamond Sky, which uh, my, by the time this is up, it will be old, I guess. It'll be like a, few, a month or so old. Mm. And I said in the thing, because... And again, we can talk about this, like, what loose or quick means to different people, yeah. right? But for me, there were some aspects of that project that were much looser, and I say that in a loose way, but it was much looser technically than some of the other projects I've done in terms of the time I spent on each painting. And I wrote in the description of that uh, project, um, you know, fun well-building project, less of a focus on stuff, keeping it a bit looser. And somebody commented, an artist I respect a lot, actually, who I think is a really phenomenal artist. He commented, he said, I take issue with your use of the word loose. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, yeah, I'm doing it. Damn, like I'm, I'm doing the thing that people mm. always mean yeah, about, yeah. you know, dropping the whack and board and oh, <laughs> uh, an image appears. Yeah. Wow, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, <clears throat> I think it's mostly hurting young artists. Or yeah. maybe people you know, who have odd luck that we talked about earlier. It's just that it it sets very unrealistic expectations. And even though I'm sure that when you when you said that on your post, you didn't feel like you were cheating on anyone, or you didn't <laughs> you were not lying to the industry. It, people have different, as you said, level of um, understanding of what is fast or well, I guess ultimately what just, is sketchy. And, yeah, it's extremely subjective, right? Yeah. Because even amongst the department of artists who all have like slightly different specializations, one artist's loose sketch is going to look very different to another artist's loose sketch. Mm -hmm. So I think some of it comes down to as viewers and like people who, you know, actually observe this stuff. It's like figuring out like, okay, is this person just bullshitting? Mm -hmm. And you know, this actually took them like three days. Like sometimes I see people post like quote unquote daily paintings that then you talk to them later and like, yeah, so I worked for about a month on that. <laughs> really? Like, really? Yeah, that, like, that what, much? But like what they meant by daily paint was they worked on it every day. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. I, or so it's just that? like, what a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you see people who say, like, I did this quick sketch. And actually, you know what? It was quick for them. They're just way better than you. I wonder, yeah. if, I wonder if those people who say lunch break sketch actually take multiple yeah, lunch, lunch breaks. Break That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. They do, like, multiple lunch breaks. They do. Lunch. Some people do. Yeah. So, by the way, for example, an art, ah, I, I, I never I'm, thought of that. I'm, I'm just going to say an artist. Break sketch meant, like, it's, a, it's like a 30-minute sketch. Damn it. Really? No, I thought it was 30-minute sketch. Yeah, but maybe it is multiple lunch Just breaks. Lie, yeah. Can be, yeah. I know it's, people have done them. It's a lunch break. You know what? <laughs> you, should have, you should have called your lettuce project a lunch break sketch. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, like, for example, Bjorn Huri, who's an amazing artist. Yeah. Kind of artist. He owns uh, Opus, right? Uh, I don't know if he owns it. but He used to be there. Uh, he think he's still there. He definitely anyway, okay, cool. anyway, amazing international artist. And this guy posts a lot of the time. Oh, here's a very quick piece of work I did. Uh, but... For example, him, I believe him because he, he is a very talented artist who is extremely experienced. And you can almost tell by the way he paints that it's totally doable for someone with his skills to do things that fast. Yeah. But some other times you see like, I mean, if, if I did the same, for example, if I posted what he posted, but it was me posting it and I said it took me one hour. Yeah. I mean, I hope people won't believe me because that would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it, it's, it's very important to know who you're facing. Yeah. Uh, and... I think that hurts the most when you have a student, like mm. when, when a student is saying like, oh, that's just a one day image I did. And you yeah. see it's as good as the other pieces they have in a portfolio, which took them month. And it's like, well, if I can see it me, yeah. then someone higher than me, another actor definitely will see through the bullshit instantly. And that, yeah. that cannot do anything else but hurt the artist. It's interesting you say that as well, because I suppose this obsession in the industry about speed yeah. has really culminated um, in a lot of anxiety amongst students about how fast they are. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a common question. Like when we did the the um, the charity portfolio review stream thing mm -hmm. on Discord mm -hmm. and also in the mentoring I do and just in general conversations and emails I respond to, a really common question is, am I fast enough? Will I be fast enough? Mm -hmm. And it's really harmful because ultimately 99% of, uh, and this is something I literally said to somebody last week, 99% of art directors are not looking for somebody who's fast, right? They're looking for someone who's good. It's like if you're a baker in, in a cake shop, okay? If you can make one really perfect cake, even if it takes you a bit longer, then that's a cake that is sellable, right? You can give it to clients. It can be bought and sold and all this other good shit, right? And people can eat it and enjoy it. If you're really quick at making cakes, but every cake that you put out just isn't good enough and it's a bit sloppy and the icing's fucked, 
It just has to go in the bin because you can't give it to anybody. There's nothing you can do with that cake. And it's the same in the industry. You have to create artwork that reaches the minimum skill level, right? The minimal sellable level. That's the pr that's a priority, really. Yeah. The priority yeah. is to be competent, yeah. to output good quality of work. Now, I think we're also, like even the three of us doing this podcast, are also somewhat guilty of saying how important speed is in our day-to-day work, -day work, right? Yeah. Because it's true that's, in our day-to-day -day job, we have to work quite fast. Yeah. But the issue is that, I guess, many people think that's as important as doing good quality of work. And maybe they rush into the speed, which is ironic. But yeah. they, they just speed to be faster instead of focusing first on figuring out how you make good quality work. Yeah. And then getting faster. I mean, I think speed does matter, I guess. Certainly, uh, at the beginning of a project, uh, when you're like exploring ideas and stuff like that. Um, but every art director will choose quality over speed, probably most of the time. And even more important than speed is just like finding the right idea. If you can, if you only can produce three concepts, um, but they all hit the mark perfectly, yeah. then that's perfect. Rather than producing ten concepts, but only one of them hits the mark, you know. Um, I, I think that's kind of, yeah, you're really hitting the nail on the head there. And I think another important aspect of it is how and what we consider speed to be and what that actually looks like in a practical sense. It's a, a drug. drug. It's a drug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, when people say you need to be faster, they mean you need to take more speed. Uh, anyway, it's, it's because, drugs aside, yeah. I, I think it's like, it, when it comes down to it, it's like, how often like students and like younger artists perceive speed. I think a lot of people, and this is the case for me when I was younger, I thought that being faster entailed me painting faster, putting down brush strokes quicker, um, sketching quickly. Oh, and yeah. it would, you know, kind of like spit paints used to be like back in like the kind of like early, mm. like mid 2000s. 30 minute spit paint. Yeah, exactly. And you'd see people just like throwing down paint and all these crazy shapes. And the thing that I've realized is that your hand moves. The <laughs> well, but I think unironically that is how younger artists perceive it. Is like you see, like okay, I'm going to do this painting, and you and you shit out this really quick shitty figure, and then you start laying paint over the top, and you're yeah. literally doing it quickly. But you know, as you gain more experience, you start to realize that actually the far more important thing is the intention of where you lay down yeah. stuff. Yeah. A really good artist, if you look at like John Park, for example, you know, who has like an amazing painterly quality to his work. It's not that he's painting fast. I'm sure that he can output those images pretty quickly, but it's not that he's literally sitting there like going like one brush stroke, two brush stroke, and he's just like shitting, yeah. like throwing them down on the page. It's that every brush stroke he puts down, he has the experience to know that when he's putting it down, it's correct. It's it's intention. It's, yeah. it's the control. Yes. Like if you, that's why it's important to understand what you're doing. Once you understand what you're doing, then you can break it down. If you can break it down, you can understand which part you can speed up or not or have yeah. more control over. And once you understand where to have control or how to control these ele each element better, then you can speed it up in an efficient way. Yeah. Which is why it often comes down to experience. People that, like, you know, if you look at uh, um, a lot of artists in the VFX industry who are doing images insanely fast, like Pablo or like uh, yeah. Cole, like, they're, it's because they've done so many. So they just know the shortcuts. They yeah, know... Yeah their tools so well or they know exactly what they want to paint you know like if you if yeah. you know exactly what the final like you have such good imagination or like you've done these images so much you go like i don't know what brush i need to put on well yeah i think it's I important to, to exactly know like, like process wise like if you want to do things quickly is to be able to say like okay if somebody gives you a brief to do a pirate ship battle or something you need to go okay you need to be able to run through the options almost as like a checklist right because that's what experience gives you so you can immediately go like okay pirate ship needs to have interactable fire and lighting elements, so I need to use 3D. Can I model that fast enough? No, not for the time frame. so I have to use Sketchfab. Will the Sketchfab asset be good enough? No, do I want to model over the top of that Sketchfab asset? That's going to take too long, so I will put in the Sketchfab as a, as a placeholder and then photobash bash over the top to get, get exactly what I want. That allows me to have some interactivity and accuracy of lighting, but also the design element, and I'll lose some points here and there, but it will work. And then running through that checklist again and going like, okay, lighting, and then you go through mm -hmm. it again. Having the knowledge and the breadth of experience to yeah be able to critically assume what's going to take you long, what will take you a short amount of time, is the most important aspect of speed, in my opinion. Because then you're not wasting time uh, thinking about the decisions because you've already kind of made them in your head and you already know what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Totally. One thing I want to add. Yeah. Even if 
an art director doesn't pick up that you're lying about your speed. <laughs> yeah. And then and then you get hired. Yeah. That's gonna hurt you more than anything. It's yeah. just it's just gonna hurt you. Like I think um, somebody at this table had experience with that actually. <laughs> what? Well not me. Well well correct me if I'm wrong, but at one point in your career Stefan, you were working a lot of extra hours after work and not notifying your company about it, which made them think that you were faster than you were, yeah. which then ended which, up as a progressive problem. Which, no, which, which ended then... up as a progressive problem because I've managed to speed up. Yeah, but, I but it, work less hours. But yeah. it was so, at so, one so, point. So you learned right? it. Um, it's, it's more like... Okay, so I, I, don't, I don't remember, to be fair. No, okay, I, I, I think wrong, this, if, I, if I did, I would say, but I honestly don't remember. Maybe I erased this part from my brain. <laughs> anyway, that, that wouldn't be an issue be, be, because you 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 would have lied. I think it would more have been an issue because you would have done over time and then they would have expected the other time to be done in regular hours. Yeah, well, the problem yeah, is yeah, that yeah, if, yeah. You, if you work but, six hours... And then you do an additional two, but you frame it as six hours. Then the art director sets your quality level at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then so, they give you another six hours work yeah. that took you eight hours before. And then you have to spend so 10 if, on if it. If you have an employer, tell them how much you work. Yeah. If you work over time, then they work over time. Yeah. If you if you cannot do anything in the tasks or do as much as they want in the time, yeah. tell them. Because then they would just, you know, I mean... The, they all try to adjust the It's a business. Like, yeah, it's a yeah. business. They just want to make it as much effective as they can, right? So if you tell them you can do something in three days, then they will do three days. If you can tell them you'll do it in one day, they'll be like, okay, you do it in one day. So it's like also about knowing yourself and knowing how fast you can work. So you can just not put yourself into troubles mm. and, and and being honest with people. Um, yeah. And like good producer, if, you, if they ask you like how much it's going to take you and you say four days, they'll add another day onto it mm. because they will just add that day. Even if you, even if you add one extra day because you think that it's going to take you maybe three days, but you add four days, mm -hmm. they'll add a fifth day. Because in a good production, there's always a, there's always like a bounce there for yeah, something. Yeah, managed flexibility. Exactly. Uh, so, um, yeah. Nice. Cool. We, I think that marks the end of our second subject. Does it? Thank you for listening to us. We have now one more subject to come. <laughs> um, so the last... And you better do it quickly, okay? Because stay, speed fine, is everything. Stay, fine, stay, <laughs> fine. Actually, wait, before we finish the subject, I wanted to... Yeah. We still have a few minutes. I just wanted to ask about... Obviously, this harms the... You know, the, the speed is definitely harming to the student. How about the quality of work? Because I think so everyone in a professional career has experienced times when they haven't done the best work and they never show it. Because we are all afraid of it, but it definitely exists. None of us ever, none of us have always done like best work. We all I don't think any of my best work has been done professionally because I don't have the time to do what I want. Uh, I, I like some of the work I've done professionally, but I would never, I wouldn't characterize this, any images I've done professionally as my best work. So let's say like because I, I don't have the creative most, freedom to do all your work do. is not or like the work that you've done that's not under let's say it's not under NDA anymore, right? Yeah. Would you still show to a student, like you don't never post it, but would you still show like some shitty images to a student? Uh, well, number one, I would never break NDA and show NDA to anybody. But I'm saying there's no, yeah, but I'm saying there's, <laughs> well done, Daniel, well thank done, you, thank well you. done. <laughs> I, I hereby approve. <laughs> thank you. I was saying like, let's say it's a project that you already worked on, all of the work has been approved, like everything, yeah, all the uh, paintings, yeah, show, yeah. you would show, okay. To an extent, it depends. I mean, I think it changes the further you move on in your career. When you're very, so again, something I talk to a lot of students about is limiting your portfolio when you're a student. You don't want to have too much work in there. I try to limit it to like five to six projects per person because when you're trying to find work, you're going to be very harshly judged on the worst project that you have, not on yeah. the best project. So if you have like 20 projects in there and they're all, and one of them's from like 10 years ago and, you know, one of them's from three years ago and the, the, the styles are changing and everything, it's a mess. You have to limit it, chuck, cut it down to your best stuff, remove all the other shit, right? Yeah. Um, and that still applies to me to an extent because I don't have, like none of us at this table have that much industry experience, right? We're not... I think we've all done very well for ourselves, but we're not like rock steady, like industry legends. Do you know what I mean? So even with us, we still have to be careful to an extent about what we show. Yeah. There's definitely project images which were good enough for a production, but I think if I showed them, they would like harm the perception of my work. Yeah. Yeah. Within the studio setting, 
and to people who understand the studio setting, it makes sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to an outsider looking in, to somebody who might just want to follow me on Instagram, yeah. to uh, even a director who isn't that experienced in understanding what concept art can often look like and how messy it can be, that could damage the perception of my work. And so I wouldn't want to share yeah. it. Especially on our, our station, I think. Yeah. I think Instagram is a bit more forgivable. Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, our station, you, you want to share... Uh, the best quality of work which is probably also the reason why people think uh, when they hear us say that we do an image per day sometimes mm -hmm. and then they see us posting our personal <laughs> work online yeah well some, it sets some realistic goals right yeah so it's but I think everyone does that in a way if you want to see um, and this is not a, a, a kind of like hit on any of the artists who worked on this but if you want to see real production art, I would highly recommend you get The Art of Game of Thrones which yeah. is a very very thick book and it covers all eight seasons, are there eight seasons of Game of Thrones, right? It covers all eight seasons of artwork from the most insanely loose pre-production sketches to the most tight stuff that they hired characters to do. And that is an incredible guide. Again, some of the art in there is, I'm sorry to whoever worked on it, but it's horrible. <laughs> it looks like absolute shit. But it's such a good insight into what actual productions look yeah. like because everybody makes shit work sometimes, not because they can't make good work, not because they have to make shit work, but because the time and the quality and whatever allowances they have from a clientele require it. Yeah, and I mean, I think we all have, I mean, I've done terrible work, terrible work because I had like two hours to do something or because I had a <laughs> morning to do something. And even sometimes you have a day, but then it's not your day, so you do not... So or, or you have three months of direction on one image, but yeah, all the yeah, direction yeah. sucks ass. And then, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then they fire you, and then you sue them. And <laughs> I mean, I've, I've did, I, I have had projects where I've worked on an image for a really long time, but because of the direction of the client, it's just got worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. There's so many reasons that you can output a bad image. Um, which again, I think is another reason to post more personal work because that's where you can show off your real yeah. skills and talent. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I would be happy showing it to a student, you know, to yeah. give them a better understanding of how the actual real world concept art works. Would I want it on my portfolio for everybody to see? No, but to the extent, it's also why I have some of my older images still on my art station. I have some projects from like three or four years ago, which I don't think match up to my current quality, but I think they're good for people to see. It's another thing that, um, I mean, I think we all admire Finney McManus a lot for many reasons, but one thing I've always really appreciated about him is that if you scroll down right to the bottom of his art station, he has some really old projects that show like how he started off in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that is incredibly informative to see like how he went from there to the artist he is today. Yeah. So I think it's a good thing to keep some of that stuff in. Just depends on where you are in your career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and looking for art books, so quite often they also show production designs and stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, same for uh, video game stuff. There's not always, but there are books usually are a good indicator of the quality of work. Mm. Cool. So the next subject is... The final subject. The final subject, the very controversial subject. And it's called, what is the most important fundamental? And this is a debate. <laughs> I open the table to the debate. Uh, and I say... This is just the this hearing is so cringe. Is open. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like we've been especially cringe in this episode. Um, yeah. Always. Always, yeah. Can we just make sure, we, we need to make sure that we pick different ones. So I'm just going to, I'll wait and I'll just arbitrarily choose one. So you're saying perspective. Perspective. What yeah. about you, Jules? <laughs> anatomy, say anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Please yeah. say something stupid. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I would have said perspective. You can say perspective, I guess. Um, go for it. I'm going to say values. I think values, values are values. the most important make an image to craft an image are we talking final image because if you have good yeah you I'm have good perspective image. you can just sketch and you don't have to add colors all right or I'll, values, I'll go with right? anatomy because i think it's quite similar to perspective anatomy characters yeah we're, for all, but for, it, we're yeah, all looking like, at each other like this is like a mexican standoff it's like, like is ooh, it, who's gonna win <laughs> I, I just wanted to keep it spicy yeah, I mean, obviously... Photo bashing, guys. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, before we begin, deep. this is obviously an intensely arbitrary conversation. Um, at the end of the day, all the fundamentals are important. But I think there is something to be said for weighting them differently. For example, I think it's, it's good to note here that none of us said, like, color. Or design. Now, yeah, I think color can be super important, job dependent, but it's much more niche than many other things. For example, a good value structure, which is why I said values... If you're a color key artist, 
correcting values is a big part of that job. And while you are also responsible for adding in interesting colors, I think a better understanding of values would serve you better in that, honestly. Um, Because values are the building blocks of any image. I would agree that values are more important than colors, right? Yeah, Uh, for sure. I think colors can be extremely harmful if you use them badly, (laughs) right? That's, That's for sure, but not as much as values because a bad value can truly destroy an image. Yeah. Um, that said, I mean, I guess anatomy or perspective, I, I, I would resume it to drawing, but drawing is not a fundamental, yeah. I guess, sketching. But to me, is more important because it's the way you build up your ideas. It's basically your primary language, right? Okay. And like, you can write elaborate, let's say you speak English, you can write elaborate text in English, you can write a book, but if you don't know your alphabet or you don't know how to speak English, then you can't write the book at all. Yeah. And knowing how to draw, how knowing how things work in together, like how uh, to draw a building, a vehicle, a character, mm. and how to make it all sit together in an environment or in a scene, to me is the most important. You know what, I'm actually I'm gonna change my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. gonna go for uh, composition and shape design. Eh. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Because I think if you have the idea of composition and shape design, you can make things look appealing very easily. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just realizing how dumb this conversation yeah. is. <laughs> it's obviously a right one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not that the best artists use a, a, an appealing mix of all fundamentals <laughs> yeah. and ideas. I, I mean, do you think, I think one thing that we can all agree on uh, which uh, making this moving this a bit away from being a debate, but is that different jobs rely on different fundamentals. For example, you know, if you're if you're a concept artist who mainly works in 3D, right? Mm-hmm. Sketching is, although I think you'd be a better artist for learning it, value structure is going to be far more important because you're going to be building things in 3D, using cameras to skip that whole process of understanding perspective and anatomy and build up, right? And then what becomes important is Both. the value structure. Yeah, I agree. yeah. 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 Yeah, totally, because you bypass the other stuff. Yeah. No, but you get value structure from... Uh, no, yeah, but, but no. you have to control that value structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I never use a default blender renderer structure. Yeah. Uh, I, I always find yeah. myself having to correct it in Photoshop. Yeah, but I would say arrangement of shapes in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> arrangement of shapes in a nice way, pleasing way, uh, and composition can get you quite far, and you can just have a very basic lighting setup. Like the most basic one of like yeah but then again that <clears throat> becomes more applicable if you're a designer right yeah like i i think it, it's there is although this is obviously a like i said before an intensely stupid conversation this is probably the dumbest thing we've ever talked about on this podcast yeah. trying to categorize which fucking fundamental is the best which is your favorite color we're gonna <laughs> yeah debate exactly, about it. exactly yeah but there there is something to be said for like different jobs like, like you're saying like shape design is very important for a designer where value structure might not be for a keyframe artist, value structure could be more important than the shape design aspects, right? For a color key artist, color is obviously pretty important yeah. compared to perspective. Yeah. Um, for someone who deals with, uh, what are they called? Uh, like quick thumbnails for movies? I forgot. The storyboard artists? Storyboard artists. Yeah, for them, composition is definitely one of their main, yeah, totally. main things that they use. Yeah. Sketching. And sketching. sketching yeah. what, how is that the fundamental? Guys, we've got to think of a good way to pull this conversation. Um... I would say when because I seriously regret agreeing to talk about this. Yeah. What, is the, <laughs> what is the what is the how about this? What is the fundamental that you think you need to improve the most? Okay, that's a good question. Nice one, Stefan. You saved us. Um, I would like to improve. Um, oh, actually, that's difficult. I, I well, okay. This is weird. It could be like two I, fundamentals, right? Well, but can't be all. <laughs> I am a keyframe artist, I guess. At the end of the day, but. I still feel like compared to many other people, my value structure is lacking Um, in terms of like true complex value structures, like black and there's many different stages to advancing through values as a fundamental. And I think there is a big difference between understanding pure black and white read and then moving that into like actual complex arrangements. For example, Jules on his screen while we're recording here has a really nice painting by Pablo Carpio. I think Carpio has has always had for as long as I've followed his work, just these insanely good value structures. Really, uh, there's complexity to the simplicity of what he does, yeah. uh, which makes them super successful. And so for me, when I think about like, okay, well, what do I want to do? I want to create worlds. I want to sell mood. I want to be like a pre-production artist. Value structure is the most essential thing for me to learn um, because it's going to help me push that stuff efficiently and quickly. How do you define value structure? 
What do you mean by that? Like, what is the valley structure? So valley structure and white is... Balance and simultaneous contrast across the yeah, image? Yeah, it's the contrast and... That allows you to lead so you towards the focal point. If you have any image... No, not even the focal point. So if you have any image, yeah, you would uh, put a black and white layer on top of it. So it's going to be just a black and white image. And then um, you're going to use these values of either white or black or the grays to um, either... Um, uh, direct the eye of the viewer toward the important detail is, or to build a depth, yeah. or to um, yeah, to, this you're going to use it for yeah. composition skills. A lot of the time, an image looks very messy and not easily readable because value structure is a bit all over the place, and so it's hard to understand what is in front, what's at the back, and also what is what do you give importance in your image. Quite often, uh, yeah. So yeah, you, you know what I mean. If if, if you with your values, you make an area much uh, brighter because it's much further away, right? Um, it's going to be less, less important visually. And, yeah. brighter. and if you put a lot of contrast, so if you put a character, a dark character in front of a white background, this is going to pop out. It's going to have a lot of value contrast. And using all those tools can allow you to just have a much better composition overall yeah. and direct the eye and also tell a story. I would say, though, like, so for me personally, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing that I feel like I need to work on <clears throat> is I, I think value structure is also one of them, mm. but in conjunction for me is like shape design and composition. Right. That's what I want to work on. That's like I I've, and I've been like learning about it recently. Um, just you know, just got essentially not like there's like these two chapters of a book that I bought. Um, it's <clears throat> called like composition for films by Hans P. Baker or something. Uh, and uh, it just all goes over like the rhythm and lines that are created within composition when you add, make like shapes and stuff like that. And then it, it talks about like yeah, shapes as well and like how, how it influences the, the human eye going through the composition mm. and, you know, what is it called? Like, um, not rhythm, but like uh, flow of the image as yeah. well. Uh, and like the, what kind of shapes you have, they create a certain flow and, you know, <clears throat> stuff like that. So I feel like that is something that I really like. I feel like, to me, the some of the best images have this stuff, like, nailed down very well. For me, I think I'd say perspective. Um, is that what you want to work on? Yeah, but it's not... I, I don't think that I don't know perspective. I think I know perspective pretty well. Uh, but you don't know technical perspective. You never learned Scott think- Robertson. Well, I know how to paint. I, I know how to make an image, and it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ball on this guy. <laughs> no, but what the reason why I say perspective, which might be wrong, is because I like to be able to just sketch, and yeah. very efficiently sketch exactly what I have in mind hmm. without having to think too much about the process of sketching. Right. Um, so I feel like to do that, you probably will need to go through technical perspective, to be honest, because it gives you the grounding of like understanding how space fluctuates essentially, uh, kind of like from a mathematical perspective, mm-hmm, yeah. which you can then bring in more loosely into your yeah, sketches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I guess perspective would be the something that I think would benefit me the most into my day-to-day job is to be able to sketch exactly what I have in mind. Do you think that in concept art, there are kind of like new fundamentals? So by that, I mean like, for example, you jokingly brought up earlier photo bash, right? But I do think there are actually fundamental skills in Photobash that aren't related to values, perspective, or any of this other stuff. For example, in to, to Photobash successfully to create a map painting, you have to know how to, like, and I, I use this term very loosely as fundamentals, but I do think it is kind of fundamental. It's like you need to know how to accurately cut st- stuff out, how to remove mm. fringing, how to color balance things correctly, how to um, adjust the value structure so that it works, how yeah. to change lighting. The, and the scale of details as well, just knowing yeah. how to use an image appropriately yeah. for it to read as you want it to read. Or even in like 3D, like if you want to learn subdivision modeling, that there are literally fundamentals to subdivision modeling because they are universal across nearly yeah. all programs. There's u- fundamental skills to learning like CAD, um, how render engines work, yeah. right? So I wonder, do you think do you think those things are like uh, viable to call fundamentals or are they just like tool sets that you have to learn? I, I know a real fundamental is very hard, man. A new one is called prompt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real, if you don't know it, guys, it takes so long to master can I, can, I, can I jump in there? I do think, because actually, I'm not prompting, but 
I think adjacent to prompting is writing. And I think that yeah. is an incredibly overlooked fundamental skill for a concept artist. To be able to write a successful synopsis of whatever you want to create mm. is to be able to understand what you're making. Yeah, yeah. it's many, also being able to, if you make an image, being an, or being able to understand what you're doing and to put it into words yeah. will help you also to probably pitch, pitch it, yeah. uh, talk to clients. Yeah. Also, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I really think like, um, that within writing there's so many different fundamental skills that are so useful to concept artists for example like understanding world building theories like iceberg theory and stuff like that which just to give like a very loose breakdown of that is this idea that in an iceberg you only see the top 10% of it right the tip that sticks out of the water and underneath it, underneath the water is the 90% and that 90% is all of the world building you do the history the years of degradation on the building who lived there who didn't live there the posters that have been put up and then at the top, you just show the little bit of it that's sticking out of that history. And that little 10% implies the remaining 90% that mm -hmm. you can't see. So understanding things like that, like essentially writing skills, I think is a fundamental that can be intensely, like incredibly useful to a concept yeah. artist because they help you actually be able to succinctly write about and ground your world in something that is easily understandable and broken down in a very simplistic way. Yeah. I might add um, as a fundamental, so as a big thing. Just... So did you emphasize fun there because it's fun? <laughs> <laughs> you just went, a uh, fun Well, it can be if you want. <laughs> no, but like, for example, Photoshop or Blender would be two fundamentals, you know, uh, by the fact that they imply all the 3D stuff we talked about, all the photo bashing stuff we talked about, but they are so, I mean, maybe not um, the, the specific software, but 3D software are fundamentals and then, 2D software would be another fundamental, mm. whatever you use, Krita or whatever other software you use, because it's impossible to be doing our jobs without those software today. Right. Without at least one of those, right? And Photoshop, someone who knows how to use Photoshop and someone who doesn't know how to use Photoshop can output very different level of artwork, yeah. extremely different level of artwork. Yeah. And knowing your tools uh, could be, I guess, uh, or like being proficient, being proficient with your tools can be another type of uh, yeah, fundamentals. It's hard to call them fundamentals. At the, at the end of the day, if there's the true, like, the main fundamentals is like the ones that allow you to make image with just, <clears throat> just basic, basic uh, mm, tools, you know? Yeah. Like, so we all agree that perspective, fundamentals are important. <laughs> perspective is the best fundamental, right? Composition. Well, actually, I mean, arbitrarily, I do want to know who wins this. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'd say perspective is the best. I think I made a good case of values. Stefan, agree with me, so I win. Come on. No, you have I mean, values? No, but be, be, values, be, be, values with shape design. But, uh, you know what? If you want to compromise like that so that I can win, I'll compromise. Okay. What shake, you saying? shake on it? No, I don't. Stefan, come on. Stefan. Sh Stefan. Shake hands with me. Don't listen to this man. <laughs> come to me. Come to no, the but, devil. No, <laughs> but like, if, if, if you boil down art to a simple skill, yeah. I guess it kind of boils down to perspective. Right, because perspective will we, allow we, you to do, yeah. to just represent the world. Right, if so I want the values to... though, but you can put the values is just. We, let's look at this painting here, and now for a second imagine <laughs> it has really good value structure but really shitty perspective. Is it still good looking? I think any image with bad perspective, which which uh, wants to be realistic, right? We're not talking right. about impressionism, or whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any image with. Okay, okay, okay. Like the basics of drawing, but also the reality. But also, it has to know. Can I, can I just cut in here for one second? Can I just cut in here? Yeah. If we're talking about a traditional process of painting where there's no 3D, there's nothing else, there's no photo bash. Yeah. I would be inclined to agree with you because to quote, um, oh, what was his name, man? Um, oh, uh, Daniel McGarry. No, 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 no. Sykra, Sykra Yazin. Did you guys ever watch him? I don't think so. He was a YouTuber who was like really big. Um, he was really I, good artist I've well. watched him. Yeah, yeah. He was a girl, man. Yeah, he was like, he was like Feng Zhu era. He, he had a artist. blue logo. No, it was like two blue things. And, I don't know. And like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> like a silver, <laughs> silver thing. So just speeding past this. Um, but Sakura Yazin had a video which I has always stuck out to me because I remember it very clearly where he was talking about doing red daggers competitions. I don't know if you remember those. It was something that Dave Raposa ran. Wow. Uh, Crimson Daggers. That was it. Crimson Daggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crimson Daggers. Yeah. And, um, what I remember him saying was, you can learn to paint, you can learn to render, but if the sketch underneath is shit, you're just polishing a turd. And that is very true. Yes. So in the capacity of doing only traditional painting, I do agree with you. 
like you know, similar if you're like a character artist or a prop artist, I think it's it's quite hard to do without. Um, but yeah, I think we're slowly arriving to the end of this uh, podcast, aren't we? Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Or if you're watching on any other platform, to follow or whatever the equivalent thing is. Uh, we really appreciate you listening, and we upload episodes every two weeks. So we hope you enjoy the next one and you stick around. Joke aside, as well from the intro, thank you very much for uh, listening to us for about a year now. We really appreciate it. We really want to continue doing this. Um, so thank you for listening. It, it means a lot to us. Yes, it does. Thank, thank you, very you much. everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.